Welcome to the Highlights channel of the Ranveer Show. Quick fire, heavy information clips available for you now. Make sure you subscribe. Make sure you like this video and enjoy it. I I used to be an just the average guy in college with no interest in this, no zero interest in engineering college. Engineering college, <laughs> zero interest in these things. Then I um I had an experience once. I was I had gone to the Durga Puja pandal and uh, Bengali. We our Durga Puja is like it's more both the religious festival as well as a cultural festival. So everybody goes there. So I was there. I remember, um, and I was looking at the uh, year of uh, Vigraha of Ma Ma Durga, and for suddenly for a few seconds, just like my mind entered into some kind of a zone. And normally, if you go to a Durga Puja, you'll see that all there is sound and noise and things like that. Everything stopped, cut, nothing, no sound. I I could see the deity almost there, standing right in front, and for a second it was just real than anything I've ever seen. Just real. I mean, you can't describe it. And um, very organically, I asked for two things: that if there's any truth to these matters, I would like to know. And another prayer came out, which is more private, which I don't uh, mention. But um, this happened. This whole thing must have happened for maybe two seconds or three seconds. Not even that. Right after that, the rational mind kicks in, and rational mind says, "Oh, must be an illusion of the mind. Okay, this is impossible. All nonsense. You're just believing, making stuff up. I didn't even tell anybody because I, I it's rejected from the mind. He, this must not have happened. I mean, how can this happen? This is obviously, you know, some kind of a delusion or something. But strangely, seven days later, I am sitting with a friend of mine, and there is the friend's uncle. He's a very powerful." Very advanced to pass away. It's one of the people I consider as my gurus. So his he had called up this friend, and he was just speaking to him. And he says, asks him that um, who's uh, so in Hindi he says that uh, who's there to, uh, in a room with you? Is there anybody there? So he says that yeah, just a friend is there. He says, pass the phone to him. So he gives me the phone, and I don't even know what to speak of. So I just say namaste, blurt out a namaste, and he say ha ha namaste namaste, and then he says I'll come to Bangalore for some office work. Uh, meet me once, okay. And after I hang up the phone, my friend is saying that oh, people come from far and wide to meet him and all that and all. Uh, so in my mind, there was a mix of curiosity. Ki ye hai kya? What is happening exactly? Okay, I officially I was more of the agnostic, skeptic, nastic, or non-believer kind of things. But there was this curiosity that uh, why do people come to him? I said, why did he call? Let me go and see. So I went to meet him after a few days. He comes there, and he's speaking to me and. Um, Suddenly, I realized that he's speaking to me things that there is no way on earth he can know about me. Step by step, one after the other, one after the other. What is going on in my life? I thought this is this, some trick is going on. This is mind reading. It must be some hypnotism, mind reading, something like that. Because my rational mind is trying to justify that experience. How is it possible? And uh, then he told me uh, in coming months, X, Y, Z things are going to happen with you. Uh, so yes, uh, these things like that. Uh, I have a restriction on mentioning his name in public, so that I will never do. He is very clear on that. Um, but he was a very advanced upasaka of Madhurga, as you of the Bhagavati. You'll goddess. have to explain the word upasaka again. Upasaka is one who does sadhana, one who does practice mm. of the deity. Okay. Okay. So uh, that is where I remember during conversation with him, uh, he gave me a mantra and said to do this mantra, sadhana. Just chant this mantra. I was curious because once I became uh once i analyzed in my own way i analyzed and saw that uh this was not mind reading uh there is nothing for him to gain from me so if i were to hypnotize you and mind read you i have to gain something why would i do it either i have to gain your appreciation but why would i want your appreciation you are a nobody i am just a college student there is nothing there neither do i have a lot of money he is not asking for my money uh, I, anyway i didn't have that much money anything so why what exactly is this happening then like uh, just a thought came that uh, okay let us assume for the sake of assumption that there is a possibility of something beyond what i can understand through rationality and whatever my limited understanding of rationality is so then i asked him that how how do i how is this possible so he said that that is where the process is you do um, sadhana so he gave me a mantra to chant and um, for a year i chanted kept chanting nothing happened then one day i called him and said uh, that uh, uh, Nothing is happening. Something has to happen. I mean, why will I waste my time doing this? I have so many other things in life to do. Okay, and uh, uh, I wanted some experience at that time. I I used to I started off. For, so first of all, I my entry was like from a non-traditional background into this field. So I call always say that I was more of a lateral entry into the path of the, uh, the dharma in the 
part of year. Then he said, okay, you do an anushthanam, you do, you take a sankalpa, as I was explaining, sankalpa means you make a promise to the deity that I will do so much amount of sadhana in so many days with these, these, these XYZ rules. That's all. And then you follow those rules and do it. But those rules were given by him. Uh, somewhat given by him. Okay. Okay. And somewhat, but it was still a more relaxed. It was not very complicated. You can make this very complicated also. The more tougher rules you put, the greater and you succeed, higher is the uh, result Reward. you will get. Mm. Okay. But it was more of a thing that was kind of relaxed. Only thing was the timing was to be fixed. Every day at this specific time I had to sit at night. And it used to take me close to one and a half hours of Mantra Japa. So I remember even during weekends when uh, that time uh, my friends would come and say, okay, let's go to a pub and things like that. I said, ah, just wait for some time. I'll finish it and then we'll go. Okay. So I had no expectation that anything will happen. But just mechanically doing it. But I took it more as a challenge. Okay, these are the rules. Let's see, I'll do the rules. Kya hai isme? And I finished it. Mm, 40 days, it was supposed to be 41 days, I remember. Then it was a Sunday at the end of it. The next day morning, I um, it was a... Uh, it was the Upasana of Bhairava, basically. I had not the faintest idea who was Bhairava. I am from the background who has very standard idea of gods. There is uh, Shiva is there, uh, Mahakali is there because Bengal Kali is most popular. And there is Krishna is there. Uh, Bhairava and all that, I have no idea. Who is this? Hmm. So, after the 41st day, I am standing outside and I am having coffee. I am having very beautiful filter coffee. And I am uh, suddenly I see there are cars coming. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And all of them had the different cars, but not even a group together. It's like separate cars, individual cars coming. And each of them had this poster of uh, Jai Bhairav, Jai Bhairav, Jai Bhairav. And Bhairava is not that popular in South, by the way. It's popular, not as popular as it is in some areas in North. By the time the seventh or eighth car came in, I was stuck that uh, this is something is going on. This is not normal. This is something different because I have been here all the while. I've never seen so many cars that two of that of a name that is not that popular. I can understand if it is Tirupati Balaji or some of the other deities or in Maharashtra, if it's Ganpati, I can understand very popular forms. But there it was not there and uh, just struck me in my head. But I again rejected it. I didn't take it too seriously. It could be a coincidence after all. Mm -hmm. I don't know. That night I was in the room <laughs> sleeping and 2.33 I woke up and... Uh, uh, right in front of me, I could see a presence of the deity, of the Devuta. Of Bhairav? Yeah. Which is supposed form. to be a scary form of Shiva. Scary because your mind is not accustomed to taking it. Okay. And I got scared. I got full scared. I was like, kya ho, kya rahe hai? And remember, next day I called him up, my guru. What, what, can you describe what it looked like? No, full I will not go into description. Okay. Just that he was standing okay. there. Okay, and I couldn't sleep after that. Okay. Just standing. And I uh, actually, uh, see, there are more uh, more uh, things involved. Was, so around Shiva or around Bhairava, there are always Ganas who are, Gana means who are basically uh, the family of the deity, hmm. who are greatly connected to the deity and from that realm. Okay. Specifically for Shiva, they are called Shiva Ganas or Rudra Ganas or Bhairava Ganas. So if you do their Upasana properly and suppose you have some past life link or something like that is there, it is often the case that before the prime Pradhan Devata, the primary deity you are worshipping comes, one of these Ganas will come just to see who is it calling. They don't mean you any harm, but just to check. If you can't take their energy, how will you take the energy of the deity? Okay. But this is a very standard thing. What do you mean take energy? Take means you are able to see what happened. That whatever that entity, whatever that being was there, it was not negative at all. It was, it was there. Uh, I got scared. I got scared and I called him. Next day I called him uh, on phone and said that X, Y, Z, F. He said, it's okay, don't worry too much about it. If you're feeling too scared, go and stay with your any other friend's house one, two days and then come back. It will be fine. I did that one, two days later. Okay, And um, for a few days I stopped the practice because I could not process what happened but then there is some urge within me that says that no don't stop let's do it again let's see where it goes where where does this stop where does this go so like this i kept continuing the practice uh so this was one of my primary first experiences now what happens is when a deity when one of these great gods 
whether it is Ma Durga Shiva, any of this. Suppose by some miracle or something where to come with the full energy, full shakti, full power, even passes by near you, unless you are ready for it, unless your mind and body has the power to take that, you will be in a rattled state. Because this is a tremendously different energy. In fact, uh, if you read that um, autobiography of Yogi, which you were referring to, I think I remember one of the chapters has a very interesting line when he's explaining about Kriya Yoga and I read it long back. He says that if your body is so, if you know, it's like your your body is, imagine your body is like a 40 watt bulb. Mm. Okay. And if you, 40, instead of 40 watt, if you put in 100, 1000 watts, of power, what is going to happen? It will crack. Mm. It doesn't have the capacity to take it. The whole process of Upasana is that you attain to the fitness where you can take the interaction with a Devata without either having any kind of a yay. But what happens during the interaction? There's a sort of energy exchange? No, no. Then th th that depends. That's again, those are all very... Uh, so if, if suppose you reach a very high state that there is a, actually a deity interacts with you, he or she will try to transform you. Okay, into something more spiritual, something that will take you to higher zones. Okay, that is one of the primary things of deities, uh, if they come. And by the way, uh, because this will be heard by a lot of people, there are many instances where people see deities, they feel they see, they see something also, and yet it causes no transformation in them. Okay, they remain exactly as it is. So these topics are more complicated than they appear in what we can verbally explain properly. That's why the necessity of a good guru. Uh, to take, give an example, uh, see in this case, so what happened is after that experience, uh, my practice became more intense. Okay, that's good, fine. That's a sort of a blessing from the deity. There are people I know who see deities, who claim to have seen, and I'm not doubting them at all, but it has caused not the slightest change in them. On the other hand, if you go back and read the biography of a saint like Sri Ramakrishna Paramahamsa, so he sees Makali once, okay, once he sees, and it changes him into a saint. He becomes complete, transformed completely. So not all seeing is same. That's why these things, uh, we enter into zones which cannot be explained verbally easily. And that is why there is the necessity of somebody, a guru who can hold your hand and can, you know, correct you or guide you or what to take seriously, uh, what not to get too attached to, things like that. Um, wow. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know, can something evil, something demonic pose as a positive deity? Absolutely. And it happens. Uh, one, two cases I knew of individuals. Uh, they can pose sometimes, they will come with a lot of effulgence, a lot of light, a lot of power and a lot of things. But there is one trick to it. Trick means, I, I say that it happens to people who worship. Now, on the surface of it, if you ask that, why are you worshipping? They'll say, I want moksha, I want liberation, I want because of my bhakti, etc. etc. But deep down, what is your secret desire? What is it that you want? So I am worshipping that I become more powerful or I am worshipping I want X, Y, Z, uh, some uh, things are there. Sometimes your greed and desire is much more than what you are allowed by nature. So what these entities will come, they will first come with a lot of effulgence, lot of etc. these things. Uh, and then they will give you to some degree what you want. They will tell you, that, oh you want this, I will make you the best in the this thing etc. There is always... From deep within, there is, it's like this, this principle that happens in the spirituality. No possession can happen without an affirmation from within. Mm. And affirmation is not verbal. Verbal speech is the worst of the all speeches. It's the most useless of all speeches in the spiritual field. There are higher realms of speech where you don't utter any word. You can communicate. But verbal speech is the one where you can lie. And you lie not to the world, you lie to yourself. That is the worst part. Hundreds of people do that all the time. I am doing the puja for this purpose, that purpose. But your secret motivation is something else. And as is your motivation, so will be your activity. Mm. To judge a person, observe the actions, not look at the words. Words don't mean a thing. Deities don't care about your words. They see what is your secret motivation. So these entities often can come to people because of that if there is some motivation for something else and there is a greed to uh, succeed fast. Motivation and speed. So you don't want to wait. You want the faster path. Normal 
for a deity who was a normal the gods we rever as the great gods shiva krishna adur they are not going to come so fast to you if it is happening very fast then get yourself checked immediately either how? you are a how? good that's where you have to go to a guru you cannot do it yourself how do you find a guru take your time don't be in a hurry you meet people uh, see if their words are uh, you know sort of uh, gelling with you but not just words see the energy is gelling with you and the other thing is important to note is that who what is the guru parampara which means what i mean specifically it is applied to since we were talking we are talking a lot about tantra sadhana so in tantra it is very important tantra sadhana that who is the guru's guru who is the guru's guru's guru hmm three generations of accomplished gurus has to be there it cannot there is no swambhu guru i don't know who my guru's guru is one day morning he got up and became enlightened it doesn't work it may work in some cases but tantra sadhana all that doesn't work because a guru is finally like there's a imagine a huge banyan tree guru is one of the branches or a fruit in that tree but the is connected to that whole thing ecosystem is there that is what a kula is that is what a whole sampradaya is the date is whose his guru has worshiped and his guru has worshiped in fact in tan- tantrik upasana you have to do the worship of the gurus is very important you have to do tarpanam to the guru tarpanam means basically uh, a process by which you tell them that let you be satisfied okay so there's a method of doing it we do it for pitrus also ancestors and all that who have expired uh, in the hindu ritual custom after a year or so or specifically we do tarpanam to them hmm. we do tarpanam to rishis also and we do tarpanam to the gurus to the three generations of gurus it is necessary to do them it is necessary to invoke their blessings when you are doing a sadhana so that they can protect you they can guide you they can ensure that the right knowledge is passing through you you are never alone you are hmm. just a part of this ecosystem hmm. even after having great gurus still you may not progress because there is another factor which is time mahakal he is the lord of time until he sets the tone ki this is the time for you to progress you will not go but still you practice i remember once long back when i was initial days when very advanced upasaka and i was uh, a bit confused about certain things he told me that what if i tell you that you will never make any progress in this lifetime would you continue the practice or you do leave it so i was like it was a rhetorical question i didn't answer so he says that it's a very simple thing if the person says genuinely if you say that okay nothing is going to happen you are wasting your time it's useless this lifetime is not going to happen anything for you so then he may think uh, the, what is the use of doing i have so many other things i can do he was not even meant for it in the first place the person who can continue with devotion even when there is no sight of the result coming that is the person who has a chance eventually of succeeding and this and nature is a very good filtering process it may be kali yuga it may be the time when all the sacred scriptures which were originally passed down through the sampradaya guru to shishya are all open in the internet yet the number of people who succeed is exactly fixed mm-hmm. not one extra will succeed you can practice as much as you want somewhere or the other something will happen uh, so nature has this very good filtering mechanism very good i mean there is no greater accountant than nature in the world yeah i feel it's like kind of a river and a dam that you can keep trying even if you're not meant to do it and then mahakal will come and say okay now it's yeah. time lift that lift that veil uh, gate of the dam yes. and then the river will flow with force yes uh you'll probably progress really fast in the yes. next book and in fact one of the things that happens often is that initial stages i when i deal with other upasakas younger and they're very promising and good people the initial stages when they start it's it goes like this mm very fast very fast lot of experience you enjoy it suddenly it will come this plateau that is your test how many people 70% people will fall off in this stage mm. because you'll get bored and there are other more exciting things in life and i am saying this in a non judgmental way it's perfectly all right if you don't like it i have never in my life forced anybody into upasana in fact my first principle is if anybody approaches me try to get him off <laughs> get him off nahi karna hai if this still sticks around and there are the propensities that he's meant to do it and he's meant to do it through me that is also there he may be meant to do it but maybe he's supposed to get it from somebody else so i am not there to interfere in that process then i may give him one small what i feel intuitively or something like that and tell him and then nature will take care if he's serious if he's, if if everything is in set 6 months one year down the line the seed will start showing fruits then you can decide that with whether more uh, guidance is required and how to uh, you know go about interact and how to um, uh, handhold etc necessary things yeah. 
बट नॉट एज ए गुरु बज एन उत्तर साधक उत्तर साधक इज एन एडवांस्ड उपासक दैट्स ऑल दिस वर्ड कॉल सेरेंडपिटी मींस दैट सिचुएशंस कम टुगेदर यू नो अगेन इट्स द सेम थिंग दैट्स इफेक्टिवली व्हाट यू आर सेइंग दैट व्हेन सिचुएशंस कम टुगेदर प्रोग्रेस विल हैपन यस व्हेन इट्स मेंट टू हैपन थिंग्स विल हैपन यस बट देयर इज अ फीडबैक लूप इन नेचर सो इफ यू जस्ट वेट दैट व्हेन सिचुएशंस विल हैपन आई विल नॉट डू एनीथिंग राइट नाउ then the feedback loop is such that suppose you were uh, you were to start a spiritual journey 10 years from now nature can put it 10 lifetimes from now because you are not making any effort now mm got gotcha. you all right the key is to maintain your discipline yes that was the video for today make sure you hit like subscribe to this channel and share this video with your friends trs clips will be back soon